targeting archerfish, the ambushing Porsche, the harpooning cone shell and weapon swinging bolus spiders, slave making ants, trap laying ant lions, or parasitic pumpelid wasps, which is the top of the micro predators. Just below the surface of the water is one of nature's most precise miniature hunters, the fabulous archerfish. Able to shoot down their prey with targeted jet-propelled water darts, the archerfish is bullseye accurate. These little fish have a strange hunting preference and feed on insects that live on land, a preference that needs a unique approach to catching their quarry. Pressing their tongues against the groove in the roof of their mouth, the archerfish creates its weapon. Reflections in the water help disguise them from being seen. The water droplet hits its target, traveling at about 60 meters per second. By the time the insect hits the water, the archer has repositioned itself and is in the right spot to grab its meal. Closing their gills to force out their exploding water darts, they are accurate to up to two meters, the equivalent of 20 times the fish's body length. These little sharpshooters even have smart vision. Light bends at the juncture of air and water, yet archerfish eyes seemingly have adapted to this, and they adjust their aim to compensate for the shift in light. This aquatic marksman is not one to be underestimated. A mere centimeter in length, the Porsche spider is one of nature's most capable and intelligent hunters. A formidable serial killer of other spiders, Porsches are fast to learn and quick to adapt. Aided and abetted by their exquisitely camouflaging fringes of hair and eyesight that is 10 times more acute than other jumping spiders, Porsches literally eat other spiders for breakfast. These are particularly accomplished and flexible hunters with an arsenal of assault techniques and a dangerously clever mind. Porsches are masterful web invaders. Highly skilled at moving on the silken webs and lines of at least 11 different families of spiders, each with their own unique traits. Porsches often use a stealth approach to get close to their intended victim. The exact details of attack fine-tuned through their ability to learn from past experience. When it comes to the St. Andrew's cross spider, busy wrapping her own food parcel, the Porsche's goal is to get close enough to make an ambush strike. These covert predators maneuver themselves to within millimeters of their unsuspecting victims. When they make contact, they bear down with a venom-infused bite strong enough to kill a spider much larger than itself in a mere couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. 
when the Porsche spots her victim, the first thing she must do is to decide which attack method to use. In many cases, her brilliant cryptic mimicry is all it takes as she blends with the other small pieces of leaf debris. Often choosing to sneak up on their victim from behind, the Porsche can remain motionless for hours. These mighty, clever hunters have been known to tie their movements with the breeze, using the wind to mask any movement they make. They will eat a spider at least the same size as themselves every two to three days. What works for one victim may need rethinking for the next. Sometimes, taking a detour and sneaking around the back of a nest proves to be the most effective method. A keen predator of young and old alike, these emerging redback spiderlings are far from safe. Porsche could be hiding anywhere. Adaptable hunters, Porsches will vary their technique until the victim finally responds. A winning method is to strum on the web lines of their intended prey. Either they will simulate the mating signals or try with the simulation of the web owner's own struggling prey, all intended to entice the homeowner out to investigate. With their extreme stealth, superb eyesight, adaptive learning skills, and a patience that has seen them wait up to three days for a victim to emerge, these little predators are one of the best there is. In an ocean full of fast-moving and agile fish, those that hunt them need surefire methods of capture. So it is perhaps surprising that one of their most deadly adversaries is a very slow-moving snail. The geographer's cone shell is a predatory and highly venomous marine snail, seeking out victims with its elongated probing siphon. The lethal capabilities of this cone shell come from the venom that is supplied to its victim via a harpoon-like dart that shoots out from its proboscis. Cone snails are carnivorous and live on a diet of worms, fish, and other marine gastropods. Their flexible chemosensory siphon allows them to follow chemical trails that can lead them to their prey. When that prey is a small fish, their hunting technique is particularly impressive. The slow-moving snail needs to be within striking distance of its victim. Once it is, it's a very dangerous place for any unknowing small fish to be. Of the hundreds of species of cone snails that live on the sea floor, the geographer's cone snail is the most deadly and, in fact, the only gastropod known to present a danger to humans. 
The venom compounds of the geographer's cone snail are some of the most complex known in the animal world. Injected by a disposable harpoon that shoots out through the snail's proboscis, the toxins act in seconds. Up to 100 different toxins combine together to form the snail's lethal concoction of nerve poisons. These conotoxins are stored separately in its body and are merged together just before they are injected into its victim. Its hugely flexible mouth allows this snail to dip into the vulnerable areas of some prey and completely engulf others. These small predators rank among the deadliest in the entire ocean. As the day comes to an end and darkness sets in, one of the world's most deceptive hunters begins her nightly rituals. Dangling from the silken trapeze line she has just laid, the female boldest spider spins a short silken thread punctuated with tiny globules and ending in one huge sticky silken bolus. She has already wafted her scented pheromone lure into the air. Female bolus spiders seldom grow to be more than one or two centimeters. Their name is derived from the powerful South American hunting weapon made of stone balls and a rope. The hunting technique of the female bolus spider is nothing short of incredible. Coming out of her daytime retreat, she gives off airborne pheromones, which mimic the scent of the female Noctuidae moth. Lured in by the false scent, male moths downwind of the spider flutter towards it. As it is female moths that are mimic, only male moths are subject to potential predation by the spider. The deadly sticky bolus is made and released. Acutely sensitive hairs on the spider's legs pick up the wing vibrations of an approaching male, and the bolus is swung. Caught in tethered flight by the sticky globule, the fluttering moth stands little chance of escape. One night's hunting, the spider may ensnare several moths. The sticky globule of the spider's bolus penetrates through the moth's scales to the underlying cuticle as this tiny huntress hauls in the hapless moth. She bites and paralyzes it, waiting a few seconds before wrapping it in a silken death shroud. Bolus spiders spend their days in retreats in trees and tall shrubs that are rarely less than two meters above the ground. When the time is right, she will construct a series of five centimeter egg sacs. Each will be filled with several hundred eggs. The bolus spider is truly a magnificent creature.
running over almost every corner of the Earth are millions and millions of tiny worker ants. Yet, for some ant species, most of the workers are not their own blood. These are the slave makers. Slave-making ants make organized raids on the nests of others, stealing their larvae and enslaving them for a life of servitude as their own workers. These ants cannot survive without their slaves and rely on them to tend to their queen and raise their young. Unusual for ants, the queen slave-maker will often come on the raids to carry out her own unique takeover. Having found her way to the Formica Ant Queen, the Queen Slave Maker launches her attack. She will take on the identity of the soon-to-be-dead Formica Queen, mimicking her using the pheromones she has consumed from her body. Releasing these chemicals, the Formica Ants will fall under the Slave Queen's spell. The workers, too, have been busy. Thousands of polyergus ants, the slave makers, return from a nest raid carrying their bounty, the larvae of the formica ants. Bringing the precious cargo back to their own nest, there are two possible futures for the stolen larvae. Either they will be eaten, or the raiding slave makers will rear them as new recruits to do their bidding. So complete is the takeover that the slaves will groom and feed both the larva and the queen of their rulers, even defending the colony against attacks by other insects. In a typical colony of 3,000 slave makers, there may be more than 6,000 slaves. With a minute body that averages between 5 and 10 millimeters in length, like all ants, these tiny predators are incredibly strong. The darker bodied Formica slaves tend to the lifeless fly where inside the nest, the two ant species seem to coexist. Formicas appearing to be more like helpers than slaves to the powerful Polyergus. But it is not an equal relationship. Every few weeks, the Polyergus will need more workers to do their bidding. And every few weeks, a scout will be sent out to scour the ever-plentiful land for the site of their next attack, where more larvae will be stolen and eaten or raised into a life of bondage. Throughout the sandy soils that blanket the earth, there are hundreds of species of ants making a living on the land they find themselves. Yet there is one insect whose larvae makes a living on them, the one and a half centimeter, cunning, powerful, ferocious, and often inconspicuous ant lion. The larval antlion is a formidable predator. With an oversized head, spiny jaws, and preying on ants at least its own size, this little larva is a lion amongst the world's ants. Using its massive jaws to flick away sand, the antlion digs out a pit in the sand. These conical traps are the size of a coin and two or three centimeters deep, massive, in the miniature world of antlion and its hapless victims. The fearless predator resides at the base of the pit and waits for its ingenious architecture to work its magic. 
many ants may well be the same size or even bigger than the ant lion, but that affords them no real protection. The loose, sloping walls of the lion's pit are a death slide to tiny passers-by. Similar to its feline namesake, the tenacious ant lion is not put off by prey that is considerably larger than itself. The sloping sides of the pits, with their loose gravel sand walls, are almost impossible to climb out of or escape from before falling back down and into the waiting jaws of death. The jaws of the ant lion are bigger than its head. Once it has its victims in its pincer grasp, the tiny needle-like teeth of the ant lion inject their prey with venom. The sucking tubes of its mouth parts will feast on the meal. Such is the ant lion's cunning that these little predators have even been observed flicking tiny grains of sand at the walls of their pits, as if attempting to knock their prey further off balance and into their waiting and lethal embrace. In the dunes of the Namib Desert is a little wasp that seeks out a very certain type of prey. Pompolid wasps, also known as spider wasps, are named after the food they seek, and they are extremely good at seeking it. These wasps can sniff out a favorite spider in its burrow and are capable of shifting a massive amount of sand to get to it, but eating it is not its intention. Pompolid wasps are parasitic. Once a spider is caught, the wasp lays a single egg in its abdomen before sealing it in its burrow, leaving it as a living meal waiting for the arrival of the developing wasp. The undulating dunes of the desert can work against the searching wasp as spiders turn to its stylish method of escape. Flipping on its side, it can roll up to 44 turns a second. The pompolid wasp needs to make sure that the spider it parasitizes for each of its larvae is big enough to last as a food source for the duration of the larva's development. Because of the large size of these intended victims, pompolid wasps often use the doomed spider's burrow as its nest site, attacking and sealing them up in their own homes. Sometimes, though, the wheels turn in favor of the spider as it makes an elegantly acrobatic retreat, leaving its tormentor to hunt elsewhere. Micro-predators prove their ferocity is to be feared. Archer fish that spit their lethal water darts. Porsches ambush other spiders. Cone shells harpoon fish. Bola spiders bludgeon moths. Ants enslave other ants. Ant lions ensnare their prey. And wasps parasitize spiders.